munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie and education time! Woo! Care guide! I talked previously about the hamster care guide from the newly revised care guide of PetSmart. You know, it does look pretty fancy. I do want to give credit for whoever kind of designed them because in the past they weren't always the greatest looking, but basically it's a very bright orange color that catches your eye. But usually at these pet stores, they give you these care guides because they're like, hey, you're a new owner, right? Since you just purchased an animal from us, Here's a care guide because the people tend to go to a pet store and not have all the information present. And they think with guides like this, that it would actually guide them without understanding this is basically like a checklist to make sure that at least you have some of these things. But not all the time are these care guides appropriate. And there's been updated research out there for specific species of animals. But today we are gonna be talking about mice, which mice are used in labs. They are used as snake food, but they are for companion animals at the rescue here, we love our little mice and I get to talk to you guys about my care and what I see from this care guide to see if they're at least providing decent information to mice pet ownership. If you are fancy for mice, then here we go. So let's see here, getting to know your fancy mice pet smart care guides. I don't know why they have a hole in them at the top. That's kind of frustrating because it says cute and curious with the big hole missing. But it says here, they can squeeze their bodies through any space their heads can fit through. Adult mice have gotten through holes the size of a dime. That's pretty impressive. However, I will state that European mice are much larger mice than you might find here in America. Um, but anyways, experience level beginner, which I will have to say they are actually very good for beginners. They are very curious, friendly creatures. And sometimes they could be very shy and timid the way that they have been kept up until you purchase them and or bring them home and or adopt them maybe from a rescue or shelter. So it really all depends, but usually right off the bat, they are not very fearful of you. I mean, they might not like it when you pick them up and they might get a little bit nervous. You can definitely feel their body tense up and tremor a little bit, but they don't typically exhibit behaviors that you might see in other species of small animals like hamsters. I have only been bit a few times by mice and that's due to their personalities, their wonderful personalities where they're like, I got sass, I got attitude, huh huh. But just in general, mice are very social creatures so they do need to be with their own kind. However, with males, it's a little bit more complex because if you don't neuter a male mouse, they have to remain alone. And that can be very upsetting because they are such intelligent little creatures and it would just make them really depressed. So if you have a situation like that, I just wanna stay here. You wanna make sure that you can at least neuter your male mouse and add them to a female colony of at least two females. Or what you can do is you can put your lone mouse up against others. While they cannot be in the same space if they're not fixed, they at least can smell each other and to keep each other company. And it does kind of suck here in America because for male mice in general, you don't really have a lot of exotic vets who can specialize in in surgery for male mice, but it is starting to be more uncommon than rare. Size, fancy mice grow up to two to three inches. They live for approximately one to two years, which in my case, yes, that is definitely correct. Fancy mice can learn basic tricks, which is true. They definitely are very smart, just like you can see a lot of uh, rat videos out there. There's definitely some mice that you can actually teach when it comes to tricks. They can live together in the same gender pairs. Now, like I said previously, they can actually, if the male is fixed, be with female but you can't place a male with a male because they're aggressive and territorial. So it is advised for one fixed male mouse, two females to pair with. That way there's no social imbalancing, no ganging up on each other. When you do have a social group, it's a better idea to have a trio rather than a duo because there is kind of a tree of like who's at the top, who's in the middle, who's on the bottom. Basically you have the dominance and the submissive mice. So you try to balance that out with any sort of social colonies. But how do I set up my fancy mouse habitat? Which I didn't even look at the picture yet. Oh, okay. No, it's the tiny cage. So this is their all living things cage and it, it just doesn't provide enough enrichment. Like they're trying to show you that, oh, look at these ledges here. They look really big, right? In the picture, but in person they actually look very small and they're not really going anywhere. You're not able to provide any sort of enrichment or put in large hides or climbing toys. You can pretty much see it's already crammed in here and there's really not that much. 
How's your mouse in a habitat that's at least 12 by 12? So 12 by 12 is only 144 square inches of floor space. Now for mice, they actually can benefit from both vertical space and horizontal space. It is ideal to do at least more horizontal, but for mice, you can at least go very tall with that. So they can definitely have tall enclosures, but mice benefit from actually making burrows and places they can nest in, while they can benefit from vertical space like ladders and ledges and hammocks. So they're not like hamsters, which everybody gravitates towards. And a lot of times people are just not aware exactly what enclosure is for what species because companies like to just slap on that it could just be for a hamster without identifying like what type of hamster or not understanding that no it should not be for hamsters you're just doing that because you think all small animals are the same they are not the same so we have to treat them differently but for the majority of just having hamsters, gerbils, and mice here at the rescue. They do tend to use the same type of stuff. However, gerbils don't use plastic. Mice, ooh, let me talk to you guys about mice and plastic. I don't actually like adding plastic anymore to mice enclosures. And that also counts as the kind of plasticky wood that almost looks fake, but it's, it, it's literally called plastic wood, which is so bizarre that they do that, but it's, it's supposedly wood. It's just fancier wood. But I usually just do a natural thing whether it be straw or wood in general, I just don't let mice have plastic because they are busy workers. They like to take apart stuff and turn them into nesting material. Much like gerbils, where if you put hay inside there, they'll grind them up. Same with mice. They will try to grind it up. They'll take their pieces. They'll put them in their nest. They'll keep them warm. And it's just a good idea to add natural hide to your mice's enclosure. Now I've seen people use plastic pieces before. I've seen them use like uh, toddler play school stuff that they can put inside of their tanks for mice to climb on, but it's just, in my opinion, not really safe to be using outside plastic like that, that's supposed to be for human. However, play school, if it's for toddlers, you would think it'd be safe, but I really don't trust a lot of stuff, especially when you hear in the past, as I was growing up, that, oh, this toy had high traces of lead that was found in China and all this stuff, and it kind of freaks you out a little bit. So there are plastic pieces being sold in pet stores for animals, but I just just know as a mouse owner in general, they chew up plastic. They will, especially the corners. If they want to just gently chew it up, they will. And it just, it feels more destructible than when you see hamsters chew it up. It doesn't mean that the mice are stressed when they chew plastic. This is just kind of how they are programmed. They're programmed to forage, to gather nesting materials, to put them away. I mean, if you've seen cases or stories of mice taking stuff and putting it places, or just in England, I think there was a mouse that like would clean up a little man's workshop and put all the pieces back into like a pile. It's just insane how intelligent these mice can be. This is just their brain functioning, saying, okay, I'm gathering this. I'm gathering this. I'm testing out this material. I'm testing out that material, but they're not doing it because they're stressed. It's just the way that they're programmed. But yeah, definitely for a 12 by 12 recommendation and 12 inches high is actually not that high. You could definitely shoot for more than 12 inches because 13 inches is a 110 quart Sterilite bin cage at the highest height. I believe the highest height for that is like 13 or 13.5 inches. So them saying the recommended is 12 by 12 by 12. Eh, no. So what do we at the rescue give mice? We know that mice are very wired to be foraging and gathering materials, but they don't exhibit stress-like symptoms like hamsters. And I know a lot of people get them both compared, but scientific studies have come out in 2018, which was only about two, two and a half years ago, that stated that no matter what size of an enclosure the mice were placed in, their stress levels that they were monitoring did not change. However, they did mention that there was some differences. And the thing that they really wanted to note to people is just like what they are given. Because for hamsters, you definitely need bigger space, but for mice, they need stuff to do. Otherwise there is a destructive behavior. So if you literally give your mice like one inch of bedding, you have no hides inside the enclosure and you have a tiny five inch wheel that no mice can really run on. And if you have multiple mice inside of there, that is very destructive like behavior. And we've actually gotten mice in the past to render to our rescue or to pick up on Craigslist where the owners thought that they were doing right by having a small tank, 
but not filling it up and not providing them with enough enrichment. So if you look, for instance, which this is very common, 10 gallon tanks are super common for mice. I see like at least two pairs of mice in 10 gallon tanks. And I've actually seen all the way up to eight pet mice in 10 gallon tanks before, but usually it is a minimum of two mice that I see. And I feel like this is so not appropriate because you only see like a tiny inch of bedding, you see one wheel and you see one height and that is it. There's no ladders, there's no packing the bedding all the way to the ceiling in there. There's no way for them to climb, there's no hammocks. You wanna make sure that the space you are providing them is at least big enough to actually have a ton of stuff that is enriching to them. You wanna make sure your eye doesn't say, wow, this is a very very boring plain setup that's definitely going to make them very bored because they have nothing to do, nothing to grind up, nothing to chew on inside of here. And if you look at one that's like super packed in and it has stuff for them to do, that's great. So our bare minimum, and I say bare minimum because people need to know what isn't appropriate lower than that. But you, you always wanna go bigger is better if you can fill up the space and to provide them with stuff. But the bare minimum is a 20 gallon high tank or 20 gallon long tank at the rescue for one or two mice as a minimum. By me saying that, I also wanna make a mention that if you guys have like a 40 gallon breeder tank, say for instance, two mice, and again, you only put in like one inch of bedding for that wide of a space and you give them one hide and you give them one tiny wheel and you only give them one tunnel and that's it. It's really not providing them with what they need. Even though you are providing them with a bigger enclosure, you're not supplementing what they need, which is more enrichment in the enclosure to actually maintain themselves. So I guess my analogy is you go to a playground, a children's playground. If you see it's super bare and there's no climbing toys on it, would you be enriched? Would your child be enriched if they're like, oh, this, this has like maybe one swing and there's like eight kids here. Oh my gosh. You know, it, it's so bad. They're going to struggle. They're going to fight over it. Oh, there's only one slide, only one teeter. Maybe they don't even have swings. And that's the whole reason why you came here. And you're like, what? This is tearing me apart inside. What is this? What type of park has this versus a big park where there's lots of activities, lots of eye grabbing stuff for your child to do and to explore and to run around on and to have fun. And multiple kids could be doing something at the same time that you're doing. And oh my gosh, and Enrichment. That's what it is for mice. So bigger may not always be better if you're not be providing the right stuff or filling that sucker up. But at least what I'm saying is there should be a big enough space so that you can fill that sucker up and it does feel like it's appropriate with all the nesting materials and hides and places for them to climb in and filling up that bedding too, because they like to burrow. But anyways, at least start off with that. If you guys want your minimums to be higher, that's totally fine. Bigger definitely can be better if you fill it up, if you fill it up. Place the habitat out of the direct sunlight in a low humidity area that's between 65 and 75. That's appropriate. Uh, line the habitat with an appropriate amount of cleaning bedding. The bedding should be spot cleaned as needed and changed as directed by product packaging. Mice are not easy to clean up after. And when they say here, line the habitat with an appropriate amount of cleaning bedding, the bedding should be spot cleaned as needed. They don't know when you're supposed to spot clean it. They're just trying to say, if you eyeball it and you think it's dirty, clean it. But in my recommendation, mice get filthier faster than hamsters because you might have multiple mice inside of there and mice will just poop and pee wherever they please. They're not like Syrian hamsters that pick a corner and pee in that corner and they call it good. Mice will go everywhere. So you have to, every time you have a plastic piece of hide in there, you would have to kind of rinse it underwater, scrub that sucker down and then place it back inside of there or clean gently with wood hides. But you're gonna be wanting to get rid of all of the bedding inside of there from a deep clean within I wanna say three weeks, but spot cleaning, I would say you probably have to do every couple of days if you really want to. Your mouse's habitat should include hides where it can play and chew, clean hides regularly. Housed together, mice can become territorial and aggressive. Each needs a separate food bowl, water bottle, and exercise wheel. Now the funny thing is, you provide for your enclosures one wheel, and then your employees, or maybe on your website somewhere, it says you could put multiple mice inside of this very small enclosure 
larger, but you're saying you gotta double that, which I do agree. You should definitely, if you have a large enough enclosure, do have multiple wheels. And if you cannot have multiple wheels, put one gigantic wheel inside of there that could at least fit that many amount of mice at one given time. But when it comes to food bowls and stuff like that, basically they love scatter feeding. You really don't have to set them up in a bowl. They're going to take that food out anyways and scatter it everywhere inside their enclosure. And the majority of people do use lab blocks for mice and for rats and they just take it and they put it and they put it and they put it over here. And you're like, okay, bowls aren't necessary. They definitely are not necessary for mice and we just don't use them here at the rescue. But it's just interesting that they mention that they can become territorial. So let me dig a little deeper into what they mean by this here, which you might be scratching your head going, oh wait, they're aggressive? But you say in temperament, they can live together. But now you're telling me they're aggressive. Why is that? It's vague. Even if you have female mice that have lived for years together, there is always going to be fallout. Possibly. Possibly. I'm not saying that, you know, you have to brace for impact here, but it's a possibility that your mice fall out. I have heard of horror stories with female mice actually attacking each other or killing each other, which is very rare because female mice are not territorial like male mice and they don't actually gender specify in here what they mean by aggression and who's the more aggressive that you need to watch out for. And you might see that a lot in pairs. So if you have trios, it's less unlikely that they're going to be aggressive towards each other. But if you have pairs, you might see the warning signs of biting, blood being drawn, and there is some sort of neurological problem going on and you're like, wait, 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 how did you get that? Sometimes if another mouse attacks another mouse and if they bite them, they can get infected from their saliva, it's not good. And that's how a lot of people, especially in pet stores, find out that, oh, that mouse that's in there that's bobbing its head, that's, that's kind of weird, why is it bobbing? It's due to most likely being attacked by other mice and having an infection. And a lot of the times you just don't heal from that, especially for small mice like that. So when it comes to being aggressive, you just, it's, it's so uncommon to see females fighting, but if it does happen, you gotta separate. It is possible to try pairing them back up again at a later time, but it is a possibility that your mice have to be lone mice or they have to be with another mouse that is compatible with them. However, again, it may not actually work. This mouse may turn out to be aggressive and I've had one aggressive female mouse in my life and her name was Periwinkle. No matter who we paired her with, she would not bow down to other mice and became a problem of herself. So she, unfortunately, even for me, she bit me. She, <laughs> she just would sporadically attack me. And I'm like, why? I love you, I'm just keeping you here. It's just sometimes the way that they're programmed up here, it might not always work. That's what they mean by aggressiveness. What should I feed my fancy mouse? One times daily pelleted food. This is 75% of your fancy mouse's diet. Keep the bowl three quarters full at all times. Now there is seed mix out there for mice. However, I do agree. I do actually prefer a lab block for mice. It doesn't really provide them with variety, but that means that they're going to eat all of that lab block. So they're not just leaving everything everywhere because they're just being picky. So in this case, I definitely do prefer more lab block than seed mix. However, we've been donated at the rescue seed mix before. We have used it, but we prefer lab blocks. One times every other day for vegetables, squash, carrots, peas, etc. Note, be sure to remove uneaten vegetables after a few hours. I agree. And the size of vegetables, it really does depend. If you think about it, their stomachs aren't that big and they're not going to be eating a whole lot of vegetables. And you don't want to be feeding them too much vegetables too, because it could upset their stomach. So just if you are starting to feed your mouse vegetables, start off with very, very, very tiny quantities. You really don't need to be feeding a whole lot. One times a week, give them fruit. 5% of their diet, so apples, bananas, berries, melons, etc. Note, be sure to remove uneaten fruit after a few hours. When it says one times daily for pelleted food, you just don't know the quantity of how much you're feeding them. And so for us at the rescue, what we do, because there really wasn't any factual information online about how many lab blocks you're supposed to be giving in the lab blocks. They could be whole, they could be broken up, you don't know. So for a while, I was just giving two tablespoons worth of uh, lab blocks every two to three days. And I made sure to watch inside of the enclosure to see if they would eat all of their lab blocks. And sometimes they'll take them back to their nest, spread them out. But in this case, I could tell when they have leftovers to feed them a little less, or if you didn't see any at all, feed them a little more. I've never had overweight mice before, but the only thing that would be concerning if you start to notice your mouse getting bigger 
disorder would be fluid in the abdomen and tumors. These are very common in mice. Usually fluid in the abdomen means that there's some sort of organ failure potentially, and that could be a cause for concern. And tumors are very common, especially in the abdomen and in the um, private area of females. If you start to notice your mouse getting bigger, it might actually not be due to the food you're feeding it. So when should I contact a veterinarian is the next part. It says, in addition to regularly scheduled appointments, contact your small animal veterinarian if you notice the following. Cloudy, sunken, or swollen eyes, which you can tell when your eyes are very bright, they're very bright and open. And like when they start to look kind of groggy and they have them kind of squinted and closed, it's definitely a cause for concern. Overgrown front teeth. Now this is kind of very hard to see in rodents and your mice will struggle. They just, they don't want to sit. If you ever want to check the gender of your mouse, it's so easy, you could just lift up their tails. But if you're trying to flip over a mouse to do a health check, that is extremely hard. I hate it. So trying to check for your overgrown front teeth, all you have to do is provide them with chew toys, which they mention nothing here because their incisors are growing. They're constantly growing, so they do need them to be trimmed down. But they, do, they don't mention critical care, which is make sure you have chew toys in their natural wood, natural supplies like sticks and twigs, straw, you know, hay. They don't mention that. I hate it. I hate it that they don't mention that. So that could be the reason why your mouse might have overgrown teeth. Bare patches in fur. Very big sign. It could be mites. It could be fleas. If you have other animals in your home, it's a possibility that one gave it to the other. It's not good. Weight loss, not eating or drinking normally. Sneezing, discharge from eyes, nose or mouth, diarrhea, and discolor, discolor droppings. So when you feed them with uh, food, especially fresh veggies that have a lot of moisture inside of it. If you start to notice that your stools are runny, try to cut back on the food first before you suspect the absolute worst because I've had people go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I I, I, I think my animal is dying. Uh, they got like loose runny stools. That means there's something wrong internally. It could be a parasite, definitely, but it could also just be that you might have fed them something that didn't agree with their system and that's why that is. So I just wanna make a note of that, but shopping checklist back here. Habitat, rodent block, fortified mouse diet, which you said on this page, the pelleted food. So when you say rodent block, fortified mouse diet, you're causing confusion. They're like, wait, but pelleted, rodent block, pelleted, is that the same thing? You're not using the same language here. Food dish, water bottle, bedding, exercise wheel. They don't specify a size and I hate that. I, I definitely do. They really don't care. They think one size can fit everybody, right? If we sell this size in the store, that means that all the animals that we sell in the store can fit this, that we specified this wheel for, right? Wrong, 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 wrong. Even mice cannot fit inside something like this. This is like, I think if I measure correctly, a four inch wheel. And this came from a KT cage. It's not the Curta Trail cage. It's one of those one and done deals, which is the exact same thing as this cage right here. It's a one and done deal. You cannot connect, you cannot expand, you can't do anything with it. It's tiny, it's a shoebox size more vertical than horizontal, which is okay for mice, but it's just, you wanna make sure you have enough bedding. And they do talk about bedding in here, so how much is enough bedding? We at least give mice three inches of bedding because they do burrow, but mice aren't as big as Syrian hamsters, and they don't really need it to be piled high, but they do like it when it is stacked differently, when they can push it to one side, walk on it, dig tunnels. They really like using bedding for nesting and tunneling with. So it's a good idea to add a lot. Hides, treats, wood chew. Wood chew's at the very end and it was not talked about at all inside of here. So it's not going to provide any information if you just add wood chew. Why is there wood chew there? Oh, that means I could just bring wood from outside, right? That That's what that means, right? I mean, you don't sell wood at a pet store, right? That seems silly. If an owner approaches someone like that, which it is possible that someone's like, why, why would I provide wood for this? Is, is, do they eat it? Do they eat wood chew? Is that what it means by wood chew? They just chew it up and they eat it? You know, get all the fiber down there with the bark? They just wouldn't know any better. So this is just, this is half-assed. This is not great. It doesn't provide great detailed information. It basically just sets you up, but it honestly, with all these care guides, really sets you up to fail. So people out there have to go research on their own when something comes up that they just don't understand and that care guide can't give it to them. Like if someone's curious, they're like, huh, why does my mouse not want to use its wheel? I thought mice like using exercise wheels. What is this? And then they find out, oh, size matters. 
How about that? PetSmart Hair Guide, I hate it, I don't like it at all, and you know what? It's done. I disapprove of the Mice Care Guide from PetSmart. So I hope you guys are not using it out there. And if you accidentally started off with inappropriate care, but now you know of better, more appropriate care, let me know with the comments down below your experiences. Hopefully you guys did not have to start off with that care guide there, but I bet you in like a year or two from now, I'm gonna get some comments like I have with my past videos that, hey, I had this enclosure and now I learn better. And just hearing people are improving based off of YouTube videos like my own, Facebook groups of the specific species of animal, just learning from clubs and associations for that species of animal, it's wonderful and fantastic. But just remember guys, out there, there is say humane societies, rescues, there's clubs, they might not actually promote pet care, they might actually promote the standard of breeding care or might promote the standard of of laboratory care. Because mice in general, unfortunately are used for a variety of different things, you will get different people saying different things. But the majority of pet owners make it so that the mice have such a fantastic, messy looking, but really neat and cool enclosure that your childhood brain's probably going like, oh my gosh, this is like a really big playground. No way, not a playground. It's a freaking amusement park. So basically that's that's what I was trying to get at. I was like, I was doing the whole park analogy, but then I realized, oh my gosh, it should have said amusement park because, because that's that's better than a park. It's an amusement park. <laughs> but thanks guys for everything. I love you so much and I'll see you guys around in the next video. Bye.